Hey y'all, today we're going to paint a sailboat at sunset using only three colors and we're going to use Strathmore 400 paper because I know that a lot of beginners use pulp paper. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we're going to wet the paper and we're going to saturate it really, really well because pulp papers dry a lot faster than cotton papers and you want to make sure that paper is really wet. Um, what I prefer to do is wet it, wait a second, and then wet it again because it dries so fast when you're putting your colors down. You'll see I don't even have a chance to get done with this first wash before places start drying on me. And we're going to use some Thalo Blue. We're going to use Quinacridone Rose, and we're going to use Nicol Quinacridone Gold, all M. Graham colors. And you can see on my palette I kept my red and my blue on one side and I kept my red and my yellow on the other side so that way the three colors did not contaminate each other and it worked for this painting. Um, I have the reference photo over here in the right hand corner and we don't follow it exactly but you can see that I kind of do. My underpainting is similar so I started out with some almost pure yellow right there in the top center and I just started adding red and orange mixed to get or red and yellow mixed together around it and then I start dotting in my clouds I started dotting in clouds mixed primarily with red and a little bit of the Quin Gold first and then I moved on to mixing some red with a little bit of blue to make a purple and then I gradually started using a little bit more blue to get my darkest clouds and when you're wet and wet like this you will also notice that I as I go farther along I start to pick up a little bit more thick color the color needs to be thicker to sit in one spot longer so the thinner you put your color the more it's going to whoosh and move across that page and the thicker it is it'll sit still a little bit longer and as you can see I, I didn't get a chance to paint all the way to the bottom but that's fine you don't have to do everything in one go um, you can let it dry and then re-wet it and glaze again so nothing is ever done you don't have to get it perfect on the first try and that was one of my main things as a beginner that I always try to do my first wash of a sky didn't look perfect and I'd keep fiddling with it and you just have to let it go realize that you can come back and re-wet it again now we're going to start with the water and you can see we have the darker blue in the back and then it kind of fades to a nice orange color and I stay fairly on point with that except for I do add a little bit of wave texture. I won't even really call them waves because they're not waves but it's just more of a texture that I put in the water and I lifted out that little light streak behind the boat and that is one of the pros of using a pulp paper. Um, Strathmore 400 paper is what I'm using and it's not a terrible pulp paper if you're going to get a pulp paper get a decent pulp paper and it is fairly decent but pulp paper a pro and a con of it is it will lift a lot easier and so that makes glazing harder but it it also benefits when you throw a thalo blue down on a piece of paper and you want to pull some of it back up it, it's a lot easier to do that on a pulp paper than it is on say arches paper. In the water, you'll notice that I put the back line, the, the horizon line, it's just a little bit darker and that just helps to create depth. And I will eventually go over it again because it dried a little bit too light. I am now putting in these shadows under the boat and I'm just going to bleed these out a little bit with my brush to kind of make a few waves and just blend it into the foreground of the water. Now I'm getting ready to go back to the sky and finish it and I decided that I didn't like that big heavy blue streak across the bottom of the sky and I just wanted to change it up a bit so I decided to put an orange right next to the blue water and you can see I just put a swipe of the color down and then I took another brush and I met it with clean water so that way it would you know bleed up into the sky without leaving any harsh edges and then when it's almost dry I dabbed out just above the boat area 
to kind of lighten the center and keep that light that's kind of going right down the center where the uh, the rigging is on the boat. The reason I did that is primarily um, composition and the composition of this piece I wanted the focus to be on the boat. Obviously it's going to be the darkest spot in the whole painting but as far as the sky goes we have a lot of heavy clouds on the left now that I changed the top portion a little bit because I wanted to balance out the sky with the rigging that goes up onto the right and I also wanted to highlight that rigging and so in order to highlight that I needed to make the sky behind it lighter so that way the contrast would make it pop essentially so I just made sure to keep my sky a little bit lighter behind where the rigging in that boat was going to go. To paint the rigging, I just used a ruler and it makes it a lot easier to make straight lines. Um, it's, it's actually pretty difficult to keep the same pressure on a brush as you paint one straight line. You can even see with the ruler, my, my line's not exactly perfect and that's okay because that center one is a little bit thicker and we'll go back through and we'll touch on it and make a few places darker and these other lines are fairly light so what I do with those is I just kind of washed them out a little bit with a brush with a clean brush and um, then blotted them and it lightened them up enough to where it looked similar to the reference photo so now we're going to go back in and we're going to glaze over some of the shadows in the boat and make them a little bit darker and essentially you will see in the boat I pretty much just followed the little blobs and the dark spots and the light spots especially when you get up into the interior of the boat and all those things in there and you can't really tell what they are but it doesn't matter as long as you get your values right you get those light spots and you get those dark spots the eye will fill in the rest. So from here, I'm just pretty much fiddling with values and fiddling with shapes in the boat and just trying to get it to look how I think it should look and um, get those values correct. Now I'm just dragging out the rigger brush because the very outside rigging on the boat is super, super light. You can barely even see it in the reference photo, but you can tell it's there, so I'm going to put it in. And I just wanted it to be really thin and really light. And if you don't have a ricker brush, that's fine. Um, just use the smallest brush you have and do it lightly. And if it's too dark, dab it out before it dries up. And now I'm just adjusting the values on the center of the rigging and... I fiddle a lot and it was just really important to me that some of the spots up in that rigging are dark so that way it pulls your eye up and um, some of those dark areas are like um, where that cross member is but also up at the very top of the rigging I thought it was important I don't know if you can really see it on the screen in YouTube it's kind of small. I usually watch YouTube on my phone. Um, but at the very top of the rigging, the mast is red, almost orange. And a lot of times that happens on things that are strongly backlit, um, especially by the sun. You'll notice that it pushes away what the local color is. You, you won't even be able to see the local color, what the, the actual color of the object is. And it will turn an orange or a red color. So at the top of the mast, I put that color in there as well. And that's also why I used a ruler because I knew I changed colors down that mast. I went from the orange to the purple and then down to the blue. So now I'm just adjusting um, a few more waves uh, texture in the water. And what I'm doing is I'm just pretty much all, I'm trying to make that white line behind the boat a little bit more prominent by adding dark colors around it to boost up that contrast and then in the foreground I'm adding just a few more lines and then you can see I'll bleed them out so they soften up I don't want anything too harsh 
I just want some interest, something going on down there instead of just a, a, a blank flat page. When you're adding things to a reference photo like these waves, um, I guess my best advice would be just to keep it minimal. Um, don't try to go crazy. Um, the old adage, less is more, really is true. You can go overboard really, really fast. And we all know with watercolor, it's a lot easier to leave it out than it is to take it out. Um, also, when painting waves or just water texture like that, try not to make everything look the same. Have your stop points and your start points um, vary a little bit. Um, it's just, you, you're trying to make it look as natural as possible. And you don't have to paint every little bitty thing. You can leave things to the imagination. That's one of my favorite things about watercolor is when people leave things to the imagination and you can see what's there even though it's not there and your eye just kind of fills in the blanks and it fills in the rest. So take for instance all the uh, the interior of the boat back there. I have no idea what any of that stuff is but it reads right. It, it looks like it should be there. It, it looks like a cabin or what could be some equipment setting up on top of the boat, extra rigging, you know, but I didn't paint any of that. I just painted some blobs. I can't even see what it is in the reference photo and that's fine. It came out, it came out fine. Um, here now I'm just adjusting the values on the hull of the boat. Um, I, for me personally, Boats are kind of hard if, if they're not drawn exactly how they're supposed to be drawn. It is, uh, they, they look weird. They, they look wonky. And this one does kind of look a little bit wonky. It's not perfect. I didn't trace it. I drew it. So it's not perfect. But either way, that was it. I was done fiddling. And this is the finished product. And it was fairly easy to paint. I think you can do it too. If you do decide to try this, um, let me know on social media. Um, tag me at Ashley DeBoard Art on Instagram or Facebook. If you did enjoy this video, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. All that good stuff. And I will see you guys next time.